Welcome back everyone to our Let's Play series of Winds of Trade. So in our last video, we picked up another ship and got it started on its course. In fact, let's go ahead and start the, the time we're in the highest fast forward level. And you can see we've got a, a trade route going for them. Now they're not making a terribly high amount of money there, but my goal here is to try to take this uh, pretty slow and steady and make sure that I can set up some routes that have some long-term viability, not something that I'm going to have to, in real time, you know, use for 15 minutes and then have to change it up again. That, that I'm not interested in. So I think this is going to be a viable route over the long term. We're using a, a smaller ship with not very much cargo, and we're shipping small amounts, somewhere between 40 and 60 of one to two items. Again, to, in an effort to get the sustainability. And of course, we're using the smaller ship because it's faster. And then we're trying to get a great sailor in there to make it even faster so that we can outrun the pirates when necessary. So far, that strategy has been working out pretty well. Uh, we'll see how long it lasts. We also have another ship that is running back and forth between Bonnerath and Playtime. And it is doing great. Let's take a quick look at how it's doing. We click on the automatic, the auto route, and you can see it's made 139,000 so far, just in that very short trip back and forth. But one of the things I wanna do, I've, I've been looking around the map a little bit uh, since the last video, trying to see what kind of trading opportunities we had. I've been focusing a little bit more on the cities themselves. And what I have found is uh, Moraine up here has quite a bit going for it. They have iron production, copper production, and cotton production, along with tobacco as well. So they've got quite a bit of production. But one of the things they're lacking, if we take a look at the industry tab, is they're lacking wood. Okay, so what I would like to do is use that iron. And if we take a look at, just to give you an idea, if we go into iron and we sort by quantity, Moraine has 500 plus a good bit more than any other city. So I'm going to try to use that to our advantage and set up a lot of trade in iron from this city to the other places. Now, I mentioned that they were short on wood in order to get their industry up and going. Well, one of the places I can get wood is from Mathala. Mathala has quite a bit of wood. You can see here 500 plus, and it's pretty cheap too. So what I'm going to do now is set up a trade route between these two. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to find a nice ship and captain combination up in this area to purchase, but I did one, did find one here. All right, so here we've got a shipyard, and I was able to find, I like this particular ship. Oh, actually, they've changed again on me. Yes, they have. There's one that I, I do like right here. Again, I'm looking for speed as much as anything. Uh, I'm not going to worry too terribly much about uh, the particular cost. So I like this one. This is at at 15. Let's go ahead and stop this for a moment. Let's find another shipyard just to make sure. Let's see. I also was able to find a great sailor here. We're going to go ahead and hire him before somebody else gets him up. Remember, at level 5, that's plus 30% speed. That should help us in outrunning uh, any pirates. Let's look over here. Let's see a small ship. That's no problem for us. Max speed, 6,300. Okay, I love this. All right, this is the one I want right here. So let's go ahead and buy this. Now, this is in playtime, which is right next door to where our captain is. Okay, so now we've got this guy. Let's bring them over here. And, oh, we've got the wrong one. Okay, this is the one we want. There we go. So now we can pause things again. We need to assign a captain. And sure enough, here's our great sailor there. Would you like to assign this one? Absolutely, I would. So now we've got a trailer, or, excuse me, a captain for our vessel. So now another thing that I have picked up on is whenever you hover over one of the cities, you can see that uh, an informational window picks up uh, such a, and includes such things as what they have in their warehouse that you can purchase and trade in. 
But also down at the very bottom of the window, it says estimated travel time, 10 days. And what that means, of course, is that from where we are now, it will take us 10 days to get there. And I've been looking over here, it says 19 days here. And what I believe is happening, and, and as much as I hate to have to admit this, but I believe this, this narrow section here is too shallow for us to get back and forth through. And the reason that is a huge problem is because I would love nothing more than to bring our iron to these two cities because they have a very high price uh, that they would pay for it. But unfortunately, it looks like in order to do that, I would have to have the ship go all the way around, uh, which may be profitable in and of itself, but for now is not something I'm particularly interested in. Okay, so right now we're going to bring our new ship over to Mathala. Let's go ahead and get time going, and we'll follow along with our ship. So again, this ship should be very quick on the seas. Okay, so now here we are. We're ready to set up our new trading route. And for these purposes, we're going to set up our trading route. And let's see, in Mathala, we're going to get wood for 11. The price isn't as much uh, of importance if we take a look at the price that we can get. You can see if we sort here. Uh, here we go. Moraine, we can get $21 right now. So we can buy it for 11, sell it for 21. So a very good route. But as importantly is what we can get on the way back. And on the way back, what we're going to use is cotton. And in Moraine, $15. And where is it at? And then $25 here. So not, again, a huge profit margin. Not as much as if we were you know, dealing with some of the cities up in this area with much higher prices. But again, I'm looking for a good, steady profit so that we can expand our trading empire. So for now, let's go ahead and get started on our route. And let's move this over here just a little bit. All right, so we want to start by going to Mathala. And I'm not really all that concerned about the number of days we're going to wait. But while we're there in Mathala, we're going to purchase wood. And I'm not even going to worry about the amount, uh, excuse me, the price, but the amount we're going to trade in, we're going to start off with 50. And what we're going to do is as soon as we figure out that 50 and uh, we're going to see if that really hinders the price because this is going to be a fairly short route. So we're going to see if 50 is too many or maybe too few. And we'll just sort of glance at that along the way and, see what we need to do to make any changes. All right, so then go to, and we're gonna to go to Moraine. Okay, not concerned about how long we're gonna stay there. And then the first thing we're gonna do is sell the wood. Okay, and then we're going to buy, while we're there, we're gonna buy the cotton. So what this should really do is help both cities get their industry going. You need cotton to start making uh, clothing. You need wood to start making things like paper. So I think this is really going to be a good thing. Okay, so we're not gonna worry about what we're, the amount we're selling because we, the most we can sell is 50, which is what we're gonna buy. And then the maximum amount we're gonna pick up here, also 50. And then we're gonna set up a go-to action. And again, I'm not claiming that this is the most efficient way of doing this. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty sure it's not. But what I'm trying to do here is make sure I get it set up. And then, you know, later on, if we learn some different tricks, that'll be fine. If not, that's also fine. So once we get back to Mathala, the first thing we're going to want to do is sell the cotton. Okay. And we're not, again, not going to worry about the prices because there's enough profit in there that I think if we keep our quantities low that we can uh, do that. All right, so as soon as we sell the cotton, we're already in Mathala, and then it's going to buy the wood and go back and forth. Okay, I think we're all set up here. And if we take a look, we are at zero right now since this is a brand new route. Let's go ahead and get things started. Okay, we pick up the 50 wood, sell that, pick up the 50 there, sell that. Okay. All right, excellent. All right, let's see. We pick up that, we come back, we sell it. Let's pause it right quick 
And you can see, okay, we're at nearly $1,500 profit just from those two, uh, just from the couple of three times that it's been down and back on the route. Uh, I needed to pick it up before it goes ahead and makes the purchase of wood once again there. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to check on our stock of wood. Is there any wood that is accruing here? I don't see any wood here. And the reason I'm checking on that, okay, so now they've got, nope, no wood. If we take a look in here, no wood is showing. Okay, but they should have just picked up some. And nope, looks like it's being used as soon as we drop it off. Now we're going to do the same thing down here in Mathala and see what we've got. Let's see. I don't see anything. A little bit of cotton there. Zero to ten. Okay, so now we've just dropped that off and sold it. All right, there's a grand total of five. So it looks like any amounts that we're selling, the 50, are being used up almost as soon as we do that. Okay, let's check on... Right here, let's go ahead and pause once again. Okay, so it's taking a bit to show. So now we got 28 in there. And let's see how that works out. All right, right before we get back to sell, cotton is gone. So we're down to one. And the reason that's important for me is because it shows that the pricing should be pretty stable that way because we're delivering just enough that they can use and not any more. Okay. Okay. Not bad at all. You can see here we're buying the cotton for 15, selling it for 30. So that's good. All right, we pick up the wood. Let's go ahead and we haven't quite made it to where we want to go. There we go. All right, so, so far so good. Let's go ahead and let this thing run. Now we have in our ships, we have a fleet of three ships now. And again, we can keep checking in on here. We're up to 2,600. Um, actually, it's going to be more than that because they've already made the purchase of the wood to restart. Okay, so now we have yet another trading route going. Let's check, take a check on here. Yes, now we're over 4,000. Let's go ahead and let things go a little bit farther. Let's go back to, this was our second vessel. And 6,000, okay. Again, we're not concerned about the exact profitability numbers there because that's not a huge deal. The biggest thing is that the profit is continuing to grow and that the amount of money we have now is over 80,000. So the next thing I want to check into, in addition to setting up uh, more routes here for Moraine, let's, let's just take a look and see what we can get. Iron... We've already established that Moraine, it's the iron is the cheapest there for nine bucks. And you can see there's a lot of profit to be had. So let's see. So we got Stav and Karev. Those are both, yes, they're both here. Okay, so you can see a very short trip to each of these places. All right, so but before we can do that, of course, we need to find, if we can get these things to stop popping up long enough, we need to find another shipyard. And so far, no shipyards anywhere. Here we go. All right, let's see what we got. Uh, we've got 15 knots. Of course, it'd take 20 days to do this, but very fast ship there. Okay, no shipyard here. I know there's a shipyard right down in here, though. Let's take a look at what we can get here. Okay, 15. All right, so none that are really ready to go right now. Looks like we're going to have to look into maybe building a ship because everything looks like it's going to take a little while to make. Okay, that's not a, a particularly big problem for us. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see. Okay, so we've got cargo capacity 100. Cannons up to 12. We're not particularly worried about that. The speed is more important than anything else to me. Okay, let's attempt an escape. 95%. Okay, we've outrun the attackers. Excellent. That is what I want to see. Okay, let's see. There we go. I like this. All right, let's go ahead and buy this. 
the 15 knots. Okay, we'll call it whatever you want to call it. Doesn't make any difference to me. And I wonder how. Hopefully it will let me know when things are done. So I think it's going to be done around the 15th to 20th of September. I wasn't paying very close attention there. But hopefully we'll get a message pop up. For, there we go. All right, so now we've got our new ship ready. So now we need to, let's go into the tavern. We've got a great sailor. Okay, plus 15% speed. I think that's probably going to be our best bet. Shipwright, great sailor, but only at a two. And great sailor. Yep, there we go right there. There's one there in SEMA. All right. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and choose this particular ship. And I think is this it? Tiger's paw. Okay, that was it. And we're going to have it go over to SEMA. All right. So far, so good. So while we're here in SEMA, let's go ahead and assign a captain. And here he is. Let's go ahead and hire this guy and assign. Okay, so this should make sure that we don't have any problems with pirates. All right, let's go ahead and take them, make that long journey. All right, and you can see it's going to take a long time. And you notice, you also notice that the ship did go the long way around instead of taking the shortcut. So it does appear that it's going to be the case that we cannot, we simply can't make it through uh, this narrow region here. Okay, so now we've got our new ship. We're on iron. And who is going to pay us the best price? Looks like uh, we're not going to expand it to any more cities just yet. So Kanaka, which I already know, let's see, that's $37. And right now, $18. Okay, that's very good. All right, the question becomes, does Kanaka have anything that they can sell back to us? And it is right here. All right, so what do they make? Okay, we've got the opium idea here. That might be, uh, again, I'm trying to stay away from that because you make such a, a huge amount of profit off of that. Uh, I'm trying to stay away from it. Let's see, there's sugar and it looks like some paper as well. Cotton is no good because we already, we're already making cotton in Moraine. So let's see, sugar or maybe paper. All right, so we got sugar. We would pay $28 for it, and there we go, $41. So I like that. Let's just go with sugar. Keep things simple. Let's not you know, worry too much. Let's not spreadsheet ourselves to death. Okay, so let's begin by trying to set up our trade route. So the go-to action at the very beginning is going to be Moraine. And while we're in Moraine, we're going to buy iron. And there we go. Maximum amount, once again, is 50. I actually might be able to get by with larger amounts here because it's going to be a longer trip. Uh, but for again, to be on the safe side, let's go ahead and start there. Then we're going to go to, let's see, actually, it is right there, Kanaka. And then once we get there, the first thing we're going to do is sell the iron. Okay, and then we're going to buy sugar. Okay, maximum amount, once again, is 50. Then go to Moraine, once again. Head back, and then once we get there, the sell action is going to be to sell the sugar that we have on board. Okay, and then it starts all over. It'll already be in Moraine, so you won't have to worry about that part, but then it'll buy the iron, travel, sell the iron, buy the sugar, 
Okay, I think we're good there. Let's go ahead and turn things on. Again, right now the route, we're down $900. That's the price that we paid for the iron to begin with. Okay, and let's just go ahead and follow along with our ship. Okay, so far so good. Looks like we sold the iron. We picked up the sugar. Sold the sugar and, all right, so right now we have nothing. Okay, we made $846. Again, not a huge amount for sure on that trip. All right, so let's go ahead and, okay, we'll let it go ahead and get started. Let's see. Okay, there's iron here. There's 50 to 100. Now, that may not be good for us because that may hurt our pricing very quickly because it means that they're not using all of the iron that we're delivering to them. Okay, same thing with the sugar. Okay, the sugar doesn't seem to be building up a whole lot. But right now, let's go ahead and just before we get there, let's pause it. Come back in and the iron. Okay, so it is building up. It looks like a little bit. Okay, so now while we're here, okay, so you can see now you begin to see. So we bought it for 28. Yeah, yeah, this isn't turning out to be. Let's go ahead and follow along with our ship. And we're going to pause once we get here. Oh, it's already sold it. Okay, so now we'll take a look at our trade route. Okay, we're up $1,400 uh, because that's essentially a couple of round trips. Okay, so not bad. Now we're going to let it go ahead and make its purchase of the 50 and we're going to go ahead. Now, let's see what price we're going to get for this iron in Kanaka. Iron and Kanaka is going to pay us $36 for the iron and we are getting it for $21. Okay, so that is a good route. Now what we need to see is in Kanaka, sugar is costing us $28. Let's see how that is working out on the other side. All right, Moraine, all right, 35. Okay, so we should be in good shape. Yeah, so far so good, I believe. Let's we'll take another uh, another glance here as soon as we sell. So no more cargo there. Take a look at our route, 1,900. Okay, so not a huge amount of profit here. This is we're gonna have to keep an eye on this for a few more times. So 1,900. We'll keep that number in mind. And for right now, in case you're wondering, I am ignoring all of the newspaper articles. Uh, th these are excellent opportunities for trades. Okay, so we're 2200 so now we're down to making only about $300. Okay, and we're just going to let that keep going. And in the meantime, let's go ahead and focus back in here. Let's make sure, okay, we've got tons and tons of iron. So we're in no, dan no danger of running out. But let's just take a glance because this is the most iron of any city that I've seen so far on the map. Let's go ahead and see, so we already know we've got it for $21 is what we can buy it for, which is a, a very low price uh, considering, well, there's no quantity here, so those prices really don't matter. Let's see where else we can get. So if we make the trip, let's see, these two, I believe, are on the complete opposite side. We would have to go all the way around. And in fact, we may do that. We may set one up. Uh, to see if we can do that. And then we could go to SEMA and get $41 for it. Uh, although they've got a little bit of a stash right now. So that's what we're trying to keep away from. And you can see we're building up a little bit of a stash here in Kanaka who we're currently trading with. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's see what we can do with some of these. And these two cities are right here. Now, this is that long trip I was telling you about. Okay, let's take a quick glance here. 2,800. Okay, so we're still doing fine. I'm not really all that worried uh, as far as you go, but 
you know, again, it's a long trip. It looks like it would be somewhere around 23 to 25 days overall. Uh, you see the days changing because as the ship, I'm going to, as soon as the ship gets back here, okay, we'll qu take a quick glance here, 3,100, okay, we're still making money. But then, in order to make this trip, it would take 23 days, and then it looks like a couple of extra days to go all the way around. But again, the problem is that's a long round trip that we are making. On the plus side, though, it might mean that we have the ability uh, to carry larger quantities if we indeed end up doing that. Let's take a look at the industry that they have here, and do they need it? Okay, you can see here uh, for both the blacksmith and the arsenal, they could use wood. Oh, yeah, they need a lot of things. So they, their industry is really strapped right now uh, because they need cotton to get started and also wood, and then everything really flows from there. Once you supply the cotton and the wood, it looks like everything else can begin to do what it needs to do. Let's take a look at Toja. looks like they've got some things going on. Okay, they've got some wood. And the cotton. Okay, so they're they're not doing bad at all. All right, very nice. There, so it looks like we may have an opportunity to provide. Let's see what we can get the wood for here. Fifteen dollars, and let's see what we can sell the wood for. Let's see how much wood do they have? Five hundred plus. Okay, that's good. And then let's see how much they can be sold for here. Okay, so not bad. Not bad at all. And I think if we do that, uh, then again, a long-term plan here would be, oops, let's get back in there and spin this around. Long-term plan would be to try to, to beef up the industry in these cities by simply providing the raw materials that they need and then ultimately that would enable them to make the higher end products such as the clothing and maybe even the arms and so forth that we could indeed uh, take around and sell to the other cities that don't have that type of industry. So that's the long term goal. But it looks like uh, in order to get there, we're going to need some help. And one of the things we're going to need is lots of wood. Let's take a look at where we can find lots of wood. OK, we've got one city here that we already we just looked at and they've got tons of wood. Mathala also has lots of wood as well. Okay, so those are two prime cities for us to use for trading wood and that's what we're gonna get into in our next video. We're gonna really start to focus now, as much as we're focused on making a profit, I think the long-term strategy here is to use the raw material producing cities such as these two for wood, combine that with our cities that we have, that have, wow, look at that amount of cotton, that have tons of cotton, because those seem to be, if we take a quick glance, just picking out a city here and looking at the industries, okay, they really don't have very much industry. You can see a little bit to produce tools here, but, you know, if you have iron, you have wood, and then if, if we take a look at some of the other industry, if we can find some, then you really start to get into cotton. Let's see what industry we've got here. Okay, we've got a lot of industry here. Okay, you can see if you have cotton, wood, and iron, everything other than that really flows from that. Then you, of course, got their food that they're making using some of these others. But if you've got wood, cotton, and iron, it looks like you're really in business. So I think that's what I'm going to focus on moving forward. You can see our profit is now up. Well, we're up over 105 now, and that'll probably come down a little bit as we continue to buy and sell. But things are going good. We've had no issues with pirates. We've had a couple of opportunities for battles, but we've, we've managed to successfully make our way from them. All right, let's go ahead and Let's see, this is our most recent ship that we're still with, 2,500. Again, not a huge amount for sure. All right, let's check on it now that we've sold and we have no cargo, 4,100. Excellent. All right, let's go ahead and now that we have our four ships, 
Let's check on this particular ship. All right, here we go. And we've got three options here. We could try to surrender the goods. And the idea there is that if you surrender the goods, maybe they'll leave the ship alone and you only lose the cost of that. But we're going to attempt escape, 95% chance, and we managed to get away. Okay, good. Excellent. You see the achievement unlocked, coward. I'm not even worried about that one bit. Okay, things are going great here. You can see even though, even after you subtract the cost there, we're still over 12,000 made from that particular one. Let's take a look and see where we are here. 26, okay, so we're doing great. Uh, now, each of these may not be in all that great of profitability in and of themselves, but I believe what we've done here is set up a sustainable trade route for each of these that we can use Oh, wow, that went very quickly. Okay, let's go ahead and pause it now before they purchase any cargo. Yeah, 29, almost $29,000 there. We're up around 115000 So I think we're going to leave it here for now. I still want to, in future videos, whether it's our next video or in ones following, I still want to get started with a colony. And I think uh, looking at the lumber camp, you know, with that daily production of wood, I think that's going to be a good bet. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. So we know we've got some trading opportunities out there. It's just a matter of continuing to buy more vessels, to expand our fleet, and then find more excellent sailing captains that can enable us to uh, outrun the pirates. And then we'll continue to make some more money. So thank you very much for joining me in this episode of our Let's Play series, and stay tuned for more Winds of Trade.